For Moses fled and went into his wilderness in Midian, where he encountered his wife and began his training for his purpose and destiny, unbeknownst to him. But I want you to look at how Moses' response of the Hebrew men and the Egyptian fighting was an indication of what of what um he was already called to do and what the Lord was revealing. He just didn't notice it. Let me tell you why. Moses is not only just a prophet. Moses is not just a priest and a king. Yes, he's known as a deliverer, but Moses is an intercessor. And see, an intercessor is one that stands in the gap. An intercessor is one that intervenes. An intercessor is the one that gets in the way to stop damage and harm from happening. See, Moses was the one that mediated between God and the people. And his people, when we see God, right, was furious at him that time. I want to say, and they was 40 years into the wilderness. So let me tell you this. Moses was already at the place where he responded in intervention, right? And in intercession between the Hebrew and Egyptian. However, his response was erroneous that led to a mistake. Sometimes those failures and rejection in the way like that we handle a situation can cost us a life or even other losses within our own life. But I want you to look at the things in another perspective. You saw how Moses intervened and interjected. That's what he was called to do. He was called to stand in the gap for justice. He was called to stand in a place. I want you to go back to your mistakes and situations because what God was showing Moses even in his era he was predestined to intercede for a nation he was predestined to save them from the wrath of God even in that mistake God like I'm gonna turn it around even in a mistake you can find who you really are because those mistakes make room for wisdom those mistakes makes room for revelation those mistakes makes room for you to help another person not to make the mistake you ain it's not to condemn you it's not to put you in a place of rejection and inwardly instead you can go to the father and bring that and say god how can you use this for my good how can you use this for my good how can you use this for my good? And I really want you to begin to look at that. And, I'm, and the reason I'm saying y'all to take these notes because you've got to understand is that your failures are for your purpose. Success, is a, it, success can only be defined when you fail because you can't succeed if you never fail. You can't succeed if you never made a mistake. I used to struggle with the spirit of like perfection bad. It's spirit of excellence versus spirit of perfection, not the same thing. But you know why that spirit of perfection was there? From the rejection, from things I encountered in my childhood, from things that happened. So I wanted to become self-sufficient on myself instead of sufficient in the God that made me. And, and sometimes we do that to ourselves. So when you become the sufficient person of yourself and the judge over yourself, you judge yourself harshly instead of allowing the Lord to redeem you instead of allowing the Lord to break you through. See, most of the times you have to look at this. Look at Moses' situation and environment. Moses was what? In wealth. But his heart was already for the Lord before it was even given to the Lord. That's the same as when Samuel. Samuel heard the voice of God, but he didn't even know the Lord yet. Because God knows us before we know him. God chose us before we chose him, even in the mistakes. He chose you. He knew the mistakes you would make. He knew the way you would take. And guess what? He is an intervener. Moses is made in the image of I am. So he is an intervener, just like his dad, just like I am. And that's what you got to realize. You have to take the traits that you see negatively and see why God allowed those traits to be there so he can perfect them, so he can change them, so he can shift them, so he can take a mistake and make it to something great. And I also want y'all to notice this in that scripture. See, the men were also able to see Moses' identity, even if it was in a negative lens. Let me go back to the verse. The question they said to Moses, who made him a prince and a judge over us? God did. God already made him a king over them because he made them a lord over them under God as lord. And he made them a judge because he was the lawgiver. 
See, let me tell you something. Even in your negativity and the way that people encounter you, you have may have been affected by others negatively. They see the call on your life. The enemy see the call on your life and he will use people to try to stop that call from being there, but they can't help it. They're going to recognize it. One thing about hell, they're going to be like, you know what? I know God called there to be great. I know God called him to be great. So let's go stop everything. Let's go do this. So when I looked at that, I'm like, even in my negative experiences, encounters, when I look back over my journey, how I always was ready to rah-rah and fight for God, defend God. And even when people did me dirty, I found myself, because I'm an intercessor, before all of the rest, my burden is intercession, heavy like Moses. And I would find myself weeping and crying for God to not to do anything to these people because I remembered, I didn't know I was a prophet yet. I didn't know how powerful my words were that I told God to literally go in and handle the person. And when I saw the way that the Lord began to just fight for me, I'd be crying saying, God, uh, take your hand off of it. I, I repent. And then I repent for even having that type of response. But looking back, right, in hindsight, I wouldn't have, I, I'm now noticing that I was made and equipped to do this. I was made to stand in the gap for people. I was made to endure. I was made to go through the pain. I was made to go through the process. I was made and built for this. I was made and I was made not only just built for it, but I was made for such a time as this and placed in this time, in this order, in this era. And that's something I want y'all to begin to look at. Go back to the environment you were in through your childhood. Go back through your upbringings. Go back and ask the Lord, okay, how did this happen? This happened. You begin to solve an investigation. God said, if you search for me with your whole heart diligently, you're going to find me. And when you find God, you find you. When you find God, you find the answers to who you are. When you find God, you find the broken pieces that need to be put back together.